So we're walking into U-Haul right now. See if we can take their pallets. You guys got a couple pallets here by the dumpster? Yeah, you. They're good? All right, yeah, appreciate yeah, it, man. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Sweet. So we're good to get the pallets. I'm gonna go make something. Let's see what we got here. Okay, these are not terrible. These aren't the super, super good ones, but it's free wood, so we're gonna take them. And whatever we don't, whatever we don't make stuff out of, we'll be firewood. We're gonna use a hammer that has a straight claw on the back and a flat bar, flat pry bar. Uh, these two tools are gonna be your friend. So as you can see here, taking these apart is not exactly that easy, and I did end up breaking a lot of the boards. I tried a few different methods with the basic tools I had on hand, but I found that this method of shimming up the pallet with a few scrap blocks of wood, and then hitting the slats out with another scrap block, worked the best. It's both the fastest and the cleanest. I broke the least boards doing it this way. If you're having any trouble pulling nails out, just grab another scrap block of wood and place it underneath your pry bar, and this will give you more leverage to pull the nail out. Okay, so we're gonna keep track of time here. So acquiring and dismantling the pallets took me one and a half hours, and that's my running total so far. Okay, so we've broken down all the pallets. Um, I've cleaned up all the nails, all of the nails. Want to make sure you get all of them. You don't want to run those through your saw with any nails in them. And this is the yield from two pallets. So I have here a stack of half inch by three and a half inch boards and a stack of, I guess, what are essentially one by fours. These are three quarter by three and a half. Um, and then a small stack of two by fours. Uh, the two by fours I will turn into the legs and these will be a glue up for the top. So let's get to planing. Since I don't want the tabletop to be three inches thick, I'm gonna come over to my table saw and rip these slats in half. This will almost double my yield for the glue up for the top. Next, over to my miter saw to cut off any split or cracked ends. This took a little while. I had to cut and cut, 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 and cut some more. Now we're ready for the glue up. I'm just gonna protect my workbench with a little bit of plastic and start my layout. So this next step here took quite a while. Um, I had to carefully select each board and because they're not all exactly the same thickness, I had to select through the pile and make sure that I had boards lining up that were the same thickness that were next to each other so it wouldn't create any gaps in the glue up. All right, now for some glue and gloves and some clamps, and we're ready to do our glue up. So unfortunately, the camera died in the middle of the glue up. So um, basically, I have five horizontal clamps. I have these cool split clamps here. And these are great because when you have a seam, you can put these right on the seam to make sure you don't have any board that's lifting up off. And yeah, and then I have two clamps putting pressure downward on this to keep this flat. So I have one here and one here, two of these wide mouth clamps. So I'm gonna let that sit here overnight and we'll come back to that tomorrow. Next, I'm gonna glue the up, up our legs here. So here we go. Now I just turn on this little radiant heater that I got on Amazon and I leave this overnight. I'll come back to this in another day or two. Okay, let's do a quick time check here. So milling and gluing the slabs and legs took a total of four hours and the previous total was one and a half hours, bringing our running total to five and a half hours. Okay, so after the first night, I actually removed the vertical clamps and shim this up to allow airflow underneath it. Because the temperatures are pretty cold right now, I had a feeling that the glue wasn't dry on the bottom, and it wasn't, so I'm glad I did this. Yeah. 
So now I put the slab through my planner to flatten it out. When I designed the slab, I designed it so it would fit in my planner. If you don't have a planner, there's other ways to flatten slabs, like with the router sled. I actually have another video on that, which I'll link at the end of this video. But yeah, I just designed mine so it could fit in my planner. I knew it'd be the quickest and easiest. For the legs, I actually only planed one face of them. I didn't want to lose a lot of meat in them when I planed them down. So I just took off one face to flatten it and then came over to my table saw to rip them to size. Then I just clean up the ends of the legs and my miter saw. Next, I'll clamp a few pieces of wood to my saw, which will act as guides for me to cut my tenons. I posted a short about this, which I'll also link at the end of this video. Basically, you're gonna use this stop, which comes on pretty much all slide miter saws, and you're gonna set that to a depth that you need it at, and then make a bunch of repeated cuts to cut out your tenons. Now I'll just clean up both ends of my slab and my miter saw. I don't have a fancy track saw or a sled built for my table saw yet, and thankfully it fits in my miter saw. Now I'm gonna lay out and see where the legs look best on the top. I think they look great here. And then I'm gonna come over and put some marks where I'll mortise out the wood to receive the tenons on the legs. So now I grab my new but used router, new to me router, and I get ready to change the bit. And maybe there was a reason it was only $40. The chuck seems to be frozen shut. Um, it has a little bit of rust on it, but it appears that the tool's been stored inside. So anyways, I grabbed some WD-40, let it sit for a while, struggled for a little longer, and eventually I got it loose and then put my straight bit in there. <laughs> then I checked the depth of the bit against the legs that I just cut the tenons in, and I got to work routing out the mortises in the top. Now for one of my favorite parts. Just listen to that sharp chisel shave off a fine layer of that soft pine end grain. All right, everybody's other favorite part here, dry fitting the joinery. Although my cuts are not perfect, this fits really tight and I'm very pleased with how it came out. All right, so now a time check again. So surfacing the slab and joining the legs took three hours. The previous total was five and a half hours, which brings us to a new running total of eight and a half hours. So I started off the next day by milling up a couple of two by fours that I had into some cross supports that'll attach to the legs. I also milled up a bunch of slats, which will become a shelf on the bottom. Then in my miter saw, I created another set of tenons in one end of the support pieces. Making sure that it's aligned on the left side, I come over to the right side and mark the final length of my bottom support pieces. Then cut these to length, and I'll chisel out the last tenons in my chop saw. Now I'll swap out the blade in my table saw for a dado stack. I'll use this to cut the tenons out of the remaining pieces. This is actually the more efficient way of doing this. The only reason I didn't do this for the other pieces is because I knew I would still need my table saw and I didn't want to have to keep swapping the blades out. Um, because I have so many of these little stacks, it made sense at this time to actually swap to my dado set. So here's how I do it. Notice how I'm standing to the side and not behind the saw as I'm running these. As you probably know, cutting boards in the, in the short direction on your table saw can be quite dangerous. I'm very careful to make sure none of the boards rock as I'm pushing these through. If you decide to use your table saw like this, make sure you have a steady hand and proceed with caution. All right, we're getting so close to assembling this. Just a few more pieces to cut. So if you're enjoying the video so far, go ahead and give it a like. Yeah, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for doing that. And if you wanna see more content like this, then subscribe. We post videos every one to two weeks, just like this one. So now I have my router here with a few pieces of wood, which I've attached to the base plate as a guide. So first I'll mortise out a hole in a test piece just to make sure my guides are placed correctly and my piece fits. So now I'm gonna go on to my final pieces and route out all the holes.
Since this will be very hard to sand once it's assembled, I go ahead and quickly sand these pieces with my orbital sander. Then I add glue and start putting these little slats in all the holes. I'm sure somebody's gonna comment on the square peg and the round hole here. Well, when I chiseled out the corners in my test piece, I found that these didn't fit snugly enough. So I'm gonna actually leave the rounded corners in here so they fit nice and snugly and I have plenty of wood on wood contact. Okay, time to check in on our time log. So milling and assembling the bottom shelf and supports so far took the longest of the other phases for a total of four hours. Our previous total was eight and a half hours, bringing our new running total up to 12 and a half hours. Okay, so today is the final assembly day. All I have to do now is a little more work with my router, and then we're ready to glue this whole thing together. Now my personal favorite part of this entire build is routing the chamfer in the corner on the top of the slab. At this stage, I was very excited to see this come together like this. I was very happy with the way the chamfer turned out. I definitely was worried about some blowout when I was routing the end grain, but it worked out pretty well for me. Now I just give it a quick hand sand and we're gonna get ready to put this thing together. But I wanna point out a couple of the blemishes here. I mean, on the top here, we did have a little bit of chip out when we ran it through the planer, a couple of gaps when we did the glue up. A couple other little minor gaps, but the top is really nice. It is very, very flat. Um, I'm very pleased with the result here. But what I wanted to point out here is what just happened with my router. These bits, a lot of them have bearings in them, which act as the stoppers. And pine, the wood that this is made out of, is actually so soft that the bearing left an impression in the wood here. I mean, it cut in like deep in some spot. I'll buff that out a little bit with the sander, but just wanted to show you guys that. I must have been pressing it in way too hard because it left a really nice impression in the wood. So something to look out for there. Um, yeah, let's glue this thing up. It's ready to go together. Okay, so at this point, I'm super excited. It's late and I'm moving pretty fast and I don't realize that I'm about to make a big mistake. You'll see what I'm about to do right here. No. Oh, that's terrible. Oh man. Okay, so I tried to put the wrong piece in the wrong hole. I accidentally assembled the legs in the wrong order when I put the rest of this together. I made a decision to just try to make it work and three of the four legs fit, but this last one came back to bite me. I should have chiseled out more wood. You can definitely see me trying to force this one in. That wasn't a good move. So now I'm gonna take this thing apart, put some glue in the crack, and then fit this back together. Things could be worse. I could have plunged my router through the whole top or something like that, so. Just gonna add some more glue and then re-sand this up. So I'll have to do a little bit of double sanding, but that's okay. Okay, so here I've got a little piece of wood that's splintering off. So I'm just gonna peel this up, apply a little glue behind it, put some plastic and a piece of wood to keep it flat, clamp it down. Since this glue is gonna dry overnight, I'm gonna fill some of these holes. So I'm just gonna take here a little bit of dust out of my sander. I want the really fine dust, some wood glue and mix up a little wood putty mixture. Oh, 
Quick time check again. So mortising, gluing, and repairing my mistake took a total of three hours, and the previous running total was 12 and a half hours, bringing our new running total to 15 and a half hours. All right, so the crack's sealed up, and now all there's left to do is sand and finish. I really like this water-based polyurethane product from Bear. I have it in a satin finish. I really like the way it protects the wood, but it leaves it feeling nice and natural. This stuff dries really fast, so I can apply a second coat within an hour or two, and it's not as potent smelling as some of your oil or latex-based products, so that's probably my favorite part about it. I'm not sponsored by Bear to say anything about it, but I just really like this product, and even other water-based products, I tend to steer towards those unless I'm doing an outdoor piece. So yeah, definitely check this one out if you haven't tried this one before. All right, down to the last thing. We have three coats of finish on the table and we just have to apply the leveling feet. I drill a small guide hole followed by a larger hole. Then I apply some super glue gel onto the insert and into the hole, hammer the insert in and we're finished. Okay, our final time check here. So sanding and finishing the table took a total of three hours and our previous total was 15 and a half hours, bringing our grand total to 18 and a half hours. Now what you're all probably wondering is, how much did I sell it for? Well, I'm going to try to sell it for $500. If I did sell it for $500, to calculate my hourly rate on this, I'll first subtract my expenses, which are only $20 for glue, wood finish, and the leveling fee, which would leave me with a $480 profit on this. That $480 divided by the 18 and a half hours it took me to build this would leave me with an hourly rate of $25.9 per hour. Now I know that hourly rate isn't anything to brag about and I actually haven't sold it yet, but it could be some money to help fund for new tools in my shop. Drop me a comment down below of what you think you would pay for this table. When I do sell it, I'll post another video describing how much I sold it for, so subscribe to see that. So coming up here on the left side of your screen is our how to build a router sled video. On the right side of the screen will be our next video where I build my first live edge epoxy table. There are affiliate links in the description for some of the products I use in this video. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.